Hey, my name's Nat, and this is Newsbreak. Tonight is budget night, which means the government will announce how it plans to spend Australia's money. Here's Michelle with all the details. The budget. It's a numbers game. It's a balancing act. And it raises a lot of questions. OK, let's start at the top. A budget is kind of like a plan outlining how you'll spend your money to make sure you have enough for all the things you need to pay for. For the federal government, it's the same idea, just on a huge scale. They're working out how to spend Australia's money. We're talking hundreds of billions of dollars that mainly comes from taxes. The Treasurer, Jim Chalmers, will release the full budget tonight. But we've already got a sneak peek of what's to come. $15 billion is expected to help relieve the cost of living crisis. There will be a cost of living package in the budget and it will prioritise the most vulnerable Australians. The government's also announced $234 million to crack down on banks and $2.2 billion to improve the Medicare system. Oh, and remember those nuclear-powered subs we signed up for? There'll be some big spending in there for them too. But we can also expect something else from the budget. The government is expecting a surplus this financial year of $4 billion. A surplus means the government is making more money than it's spending. And it's the first time we've had one in 15 years. So we can probably start to pay off some of our debt, which is currently sitting close to $900 billion. Oof. The world's biggest sports stars have taken to the red carpet in Paris for the annual Laureus World Sports Awards. This year, Lionel Messi was named Sportsman of the Year, while his World Cup winning Argentina was named Team of the Year. Sportswoman of the Year went to Jamaican sprinter Shelly Ann Fraser-Price. We are strong, we are powerful, and most importantly, we are fearless. While Swiss para-athlete Catherine de Brunner was named World Sports Person of the Year with a disability. Experts are calling for more rules to protect Aussie kids from junk food ads, following some pretty alarming new data. Here's Josh. Take the Pepsi Max Taste Challenge. Sprite Lemon Plus with caffeine and zesty lemon flavour. Grab your chance to win a seat at the final. $129.5 million. That's how much money Australia's Cancer Council says was spent over a two-year period on advertising by companies that make sugary drinks. And it's got health experts pretty worried. They say kids are being bombarded with ads for sugary drinks, with 80% of them in places that can be seen by young people going about their daily lives. So Cancer Council is calling for stronger rules to protect them. You see, drinking sugary drinks regularly can cause unhealthy weight gain, which can increase the risk of some diseases, including some cancers. And at the moment, the government is only spending about $26.5 million on healthy eating campaigns. And that's about five times less than the sugary drink industry's spending. It reckons Australia should adopt similar rules to the UK by banning junk food ads on TV before 9pm, reducing in-store promotion of less healthy food and drink, and cracking down on digital junk food ads to help all of us make some healthier choices. Ugh. Now it's time to layer up, because these next stories are a bit chilly. <laughs> if you live in the south and east of the country, well, you know it's been cold. But in the ACT, it's been snowing, with temps well below the average for this time of year. I hope this gives you some kind of understanding how big these flakes actually are. It's also been pretty cold in parts of Queensland. And if you're wondering how cold... It's thongs and socks cold. Now to the ISS, and have you ever wondered what happens to rubbish in space? Well, this. All right, bye-bye. Just flies beautifully. The bundle of junk is some old hardware from the station that was no longer needed. And finally, swimmers from around the world have come here to Lake Titicaca in Bolivia, braving the cold for an open water competition. It's the world's highest lake that boats can navigate, sitting 3.8 kilometres above sea level. When you've been swimming for two and a half hours at high altitude in the cold, it's really tough. Well, that's all from us today. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay warm.